Greetings again everyone, and we are diving into macro lens territory today by testing out the very popular Sigma 105mm f2.8 EX DG OS HSM macro. This is a bit of an older lens nowadays, but its good reputation and low price have made it very well liked. It only costs about $500 in the US, or just over £300 in the UK, for a full frame, autofocus, image stabilised macro lens that is fantastic value for money. Well, if it's any good, of course. It's available for Canon, Nikon, Sony and Sigma digital SLR cameras, and it can be adapted onto mirrorless cameras quite easily too. Macro lenses in the 100mm focal range are some of the most popular available, and the market is a little crowded with them. Take a look at the macro lens comparison video on my channel to get an idea of the variety that are available. They can get you very close to small subjects, and this one offers you 1 to 1 magnification. And a maximum aperture as bright as f2.8 also means that they double up nicely as a portrait lens, and I've always liked to shoot landscape pictures at 100mm, for some reason you just seem to get a nicely compressed image there, so the lens is fairly versatile. Helping you to get sharper pictures in darker situations is this lens's image stabilisation system, which Sigma call OS. Here's some footage with it turned off and now turned on to mode 1, which is for general use. It takes a moment to kick in, and it makes a tiny whirring sound as it goes, but it holds your image lovely and steady, although if you tilt or pan your lens, then it moves in a slightly jerky way. There's also mode 2, which just stabilises the vertical axis for if you want to do panning shots, but you'll want to leave the lens in mode 1 for general use. Image stabilisation is always much less effective when shooting close up though, as you can see here. Well, it barely helps at all at macro distances, although that is normal for all stabilised macro lenses to an extent. Well, let's look at this thing's build quality. There's lots of plastic in its construction, but it feels solid enough, weighing just over 700 grams. It's based on a metal lens mount, but without any kind of weather sealing gasket. The lens's rubberized focus ring turns smoothly and precisely for a decent manual focusing experience, and it can be safely turned at any time. As usual for a macro lens, we get some enormous focus breathing whenever you focus in and out. The lens zooms in closer to your subject when you focus down. The lens's autofocus motor works accurately and quite quietly, but somewhat slowly as you can see here. If you autofocus while shooting video, your camera's microphone will pick up quite some noise from that focusing and from the image stabilisation. The lens comes with a lovely carry case and an interesting double lens hood. You can extend the normal hood with an additional hood for if you're shooting with a smaller centred APS-C camera to make the hood even deeper. That is as slightly silly as it is kind of awesome. The filter thread size is a medium 62mm wide. Overall, for the price you're paying here, the build quality is more than satisfactory and it works very well out in the field. Well, let's move on and look at image quality. I'm going to start by testing it out on a full frame camera by adapting it onto my Sony A7R 2 with its 42 megapixel sensor. At f2.8, the middle of the image is brilliantly sharp with good contrast. The corners of your image will be softer, as you can see. Stop down to f4 or f5.6 for just tiny improvements there, but at f8, the corners finally look as good as in the middle of the image. So, it's a very good result on full frame with good sharpness and contrast, but for best results in the corners you should stop down your aperture a little bit. Well, let's see about image quality on an APS-C camera. I am going to punish this lens by mounting it onto my Canon EOS M6 Mark II with its extremely demanding 32.5 megapixel sensor. At f2.8, the lens is reasonably sharp in the middle, but contrast is looking a bit ghostly here. The corners are noticeably soft, with some chromatic aberration. Stop down to f4, and they look a bit better, and the middle of the image becomes very sharp, with good contrast making a return. The lens doesn't get any sharper as you stop down further though, not even in the corners, and by the time you reach f11, the image starts getting a lot softer again, due to the physical effects of diffraction. 
so it's just an average performance there on APS-C, but admittedly, that's a pretty tough camera sensor to test it on. Your images will seem better on a 24 megapixel camera. Ok, let's take a look at close-up image quality, pretty important on a macro lens. Straight from f2.8, sharpness and contrast are exceptionally high, although we can see some colour fringing. It's reduced at f4, and at f5.6, it's gone. The lens remains this sharp down to f8, although at f11, we begin to see a little softness emerging from diffraction. f16 is very soft, f22 unusable. But overall, it's actually a great macro performance there. Let's take a look at distortion and vignetting on a full frame camera. The lens projects no real distortion, but the corners are rather darkened at f2.8, as you'd expect to see. At f4 and f5.6, they quickly brighten up, though. Let's see how the lens performs against bright lights. Quite a bit of glaring gets into the picture here when bright lights are nearby, and some soft flaring, too. Not a great performance, really, but macro lenses often struggle a little in this respect, anyway. At f2.8, this lens can also get you some nicely out of focus backgrounds, so let's check out the quality of its bokeh. I don't think I've ever encountered a short telephoto macro lens with anything other than very soft bokeh, and thankfully, this Sigma lens doesn't break the mould. Your out of focus backgrounds always look reasonably soft. And related to bokeh is longitudinal chromatic aberration, or colour fringing in your out of focus highlights. It's normally a real problem for macro lenses. With the Sigma, we do see some green and pink fringing at f2.8. As you stop down to f4, f5.6, and f8, it gradually reduces. Ok, what can we say overall? Well, it's a full frame macro lens with good build quality, autofocus and image stabilisation, pretty sharp image quality with no nasty surprises, and all for about $500. That is a bargain, and value for money counts for a lot in my conclusions. But even if you're not shooting on a budget, the lens is great, and it does come highly recommended.